Hello, I'm Bridge Singh from John Deere Electronic Solutions. I would be talking about John Deere Budget Period 5 Power America project. Our project collaborators are National Renewable Energy Laboratory Scientist led by Kevin Binion. What you see in this slide is battery powered wide band gap power conversion system for heavy duty vehicle. This power conversion system is realized by three power converters, 200 kilowatt silicon carbide traction inverter, 200 kilowatt silicon carbide non-isolated DC-DC converter, and 15 kilowatt silicon carbide slash gallium nitride dual active bridge base isolated DC DC converter for export power. In the middle, you see boxed diagram that is showing the 200 kilowatt traction inverter, but ability to operate over a wide range on the DC bus, 500 volt to 1100 volt. The reason it is important to show the variable DC bus operation because in heavy duty vehicle, vehicle operates at a very low speed and sometime at a high speed. So when vehicle is operating at low speed, power can be generated by current means under the high torque and low power region of the operation for vehicle power is delivered by current under high power and high speed power is delivered by voltage so by this 200 kilowatt traction system can be optimized to operate at the most efficient point. Also, dynamics is very, very important. So this converter system, if it diesel engine powered, can also be operated by variable DC bus, but engine cannot keep up with dynamics of traction system. So it may have a sluggish response for operator command. But with the fast acting DC-DC converter, the first dynamics can be achieved. So that's why second box, which is three phase magnetics, that is used to interface energy storage device, in our case here, simulated energy storage device. We are interfacing energy storage device using three phase inductor and silicon carbide non isolated DC DC converter. So overall, this system would be far more efficient if traction inverter is operated at variable DC bus. Non-isolated DC-DC converter can be operated at variable switching frequency, also discontinuous continuous operation of current. And the third box, which is three-phase dual active bridge, it's replacing the alternator because once diesel engine replace by energy storage device, then DC-DC converter can be useful, will be operating far high efficiency as compared to alternator. So overall system is far better optimized for energy efficiency. We have achieved the functionality of the these three converter. In interest of time, I would be showing Bay pumps for the D3 converters. So 200 kilowatt silicon carbide traction inverter operated at 40 kilowatt traction power, powered with 350 volt at energy storage device. Channel one is a steady state traction motor current. Channel two is steady state energy storage DC bus voltage. Channel three is steady state 
traction inverter DC bus voltage. Here we are operating a traction inverter at 1050 volt. We have not yet done the variable bus DC bus operation. And channel four is the wave pump for inductor current. This slide shows traction inverter operation at 80 kilowatt, but 700 volt and energy storage device. The reason we need to increase DC bus voltage of energy storage device because simulated energy storage system cannot produce more than 40 kilowatt power at 350 volt. By increasing voltage, we were able to increase the power. As I said, it is a simulated energy storage device. It's not a battery. We are about to use ultra capacitor and maybe this situation would be better that we would be able to get high power up to 80 kilowatt even at 350 volt. So channel one, phase current for traction motor. Channel two, energy storage DC bus voltage. Channel three, traction inverter DC bus voltage. Channel four, phase current of DC-DC converter inductor current. This slide shows results for 200 kilowatt silicon carbide non-isolated DC-DC converter with 40 kilowatt traction power. This non-isolated DC-DC converter can be switched at a variable switching frequency. And the reason is that across the power range, if you vary the switching frequency, efficiency can be optimized. But these are steady state results when non-isolated DC-DC converter switch at 20 kilohertz, inductor voltage varies from minus 700 volt to 350 volt. The reason is that this is just a boundary condition of non-isolated DC-DC converter running just at the continuous mode. And inductor current are shown here. So we have achieved the functionality and we want to miniaturize the inductor power inductors, improve their power density, packaging, thermal management. So this result is heat rise test with traction power 40 kilowatt and this power coming from the energy storage device, non-isolated DC-DC converter switch at 20 kilohertz Nearly two hour run, the core temperature is rising 50 degrees C and winding temperature of power inductor rising about 40 degrees C. So we have, we are using these data to improve the size, packaging, power density, and thermal management of power inductors used in non-isolated DC-DC converters. These are results for 350 volt to 56 volt silicon carbide gallium nitride isolated DC-DC converter. And we are using three phase DC-DC converter, so pretty much DAV3. Condition, 350 volt on the silicon carbide DC bus, 42 volt commanded on the gallium nitride DC bus with five ampere load. We have achieved the functionality and we are moving towards 15 kilowatt power. Channel one, line to line voltage on the primary converter, line to line voltage on the secondary converter seen by channel two. Line current of the primary converter by channel three and line current of secondary converter by channel four. So as I said earlier, we have achieved the functionality of E3 converter, 200 kilowatt traction inverter, 200 kilowatt non-isolated DC-DC converter, 15 kilowatt silicon carbide gallium nitride base, isolated DC-DC converter, and we are improving their power rating, packaging, 
thermal management. So I would like to acknowledge Department of Energy for funding John Deere project through Power America, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, scientists led by Kevin Minion, and John Deere management for providing me engineering support and cost share. I would be happy to answer any question you may have. Thanks for listening.